football as well. Um, you might well be thinking about going to the shops today in the most unusual of circumstances this Christmas to get food and drink. But it is going to be very, very different this year. I'm, I'm trying to think about all those people. You know, some people will have prepared a big meal, won't they? And other people, of course, won't have been doing that because they've made, they were going to go and have the meal there. So there's all sorts of mm. things going on, aren't there? Um, some of the major supermarkets have reintroduced item rationing as well, as there are concerns that supplies of some fresh produce could be limited between Christmas and New Year. Sarah is going to talk about all of that for us. She's at Berry Market for us this morning, where there is obviously still fresh produce. Yes, good morning from Berry. This place is packed full of independent retailers, 350 stalls selling everything from toys to clothes to all of our fresh fruit and veg. And they're stocking up now, really getting ready for what they hope will be one of their busiest days of the year. Now, they're hoping people will come and stock up on their last-minute food and drink for Christmas. Now, shoppers are expected to spend a record-breaking £12 billion on groceries in December alone. Now, that's up £1.5 billion on the year before. Turkey sales, they're also up 36% of course for our Christmas dinner and another festive must-have Christmas puddings. We have spent a staggering £11 million on puddings this year. Mince pies though, they are actually down this year, 8% down, perhaps because there are fewer social gatherings, fewer get-togethers, so a bit of a mixed picture there. Now it's a hive of activity here, people getting ready to start trading. We can have a chat with Pete, a fruit and veg salesman here. Pete, can we have a quick chat? Busy, busy day for you this morning. Very busy, very busy. So hopefully. With, with the ongoing disruption at um, Dover, how's that affected some of your supplies? If you do ask me yesterday, I said it didn't really have much effect. But I went to the market at three o'clock this morning and it was really, really hard to get stuff. So it was sort of like begging favours off people to try and get the stock. The, no broccoli, no cauliflowers, Satsumas, Clementines, just nothing coming through at all. Two that, wagons and they were just local. And that's because at this time of year we import a lot of our salads, a lot of our citrus fruits, our tomatoes come from the oh, EU and, and there's just delays, isn't there? There's just nothing coming through, nothing's not going to move, they just don't want to come over because they know when they get here they can't get home again. And what has this year been, been like for you trying to run a business? It's been really stop-start, hasn't it? Nobody knows. We've never experienced anything like it, so we didn't know what to expect. We did close on the initial lockdown because there was just no footfall, uh, but we started doing home delivery and we did open for the last lockdown and probably 50% of the take-ins had gone. You're People hoping... still scared of coming out. You're hoping, though, that today is going to help and it's going to be really busy. It's going to be busy, it's going to help, but it's not going to compensate for, like, nine months of lots of trade. Yeah. So challenging times ahead there. Well, I'll let, I'll let you um, crack on and set up. We can just have a really quick chat with the butcher down here because traders, they're hoping that they can really benefit from the Christmas rush today to try and claw back some of those lockdown losses. And the butcher here, Mark, is going to be really, really busy. Mark, quick chat with you. Obviously, our Christmas plans have changed. Have you seen what we're buying change? Uh, a lot more uh, turkeys for this year because uh, obviously people can't go out to eat at meals and uh, we should be hopefully busy today, yeah, hopefully with a good day and plenty of uh, joints of beef and lamb and all that, so yeah. hopefully. So you're hoping for a last minute rush? We are, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a terrible year, haven't it? It's been horrible, so hopefully we'll get a better year. And how long have you been on the market for? Oof. 30 years. And have you ever seen anything <laughs> like 2020? Nothing, no, nothing at all. No, it's been a horrendous year, hasn't it, for everyone, so... Yeah. OK, well, I'll let you guys crack on. You've got four butchers here, all very busy, yeah, very waiting much. for the customers to arrive. And in the next hour, they're expecting a lot of people to come through the doors here and get their Christmas shopping. And those lorry drivers having to wait. Uh, French citizens and hauliers are now being told that they can travel across the Channel once they've tested negative for COVID-19. Almost 3,000 lorry drivers stranded at Dover will be offered rapid lateral flow tests after many spent a third night in their vehicles. Our correspondent John Donison reports. After days of gridlock, 
Finally, some movement. France reopened its border overnight and the port of Dover says services are resuming today. But anyone travelling to France from the UK will have to show proof of a negative coronavirus test in the previous 72 hours. And shifting thousands of lorries won't happen quickly. Obviously, there's a physical issue of uh, you know, providing the test, getting the results, and negative tests allows you to leave. Um, but all of that requires operationalizing, and that, that can't happen in an instant. Um, so this will take uh, two or three days for um, things to be cleared. At Manston Airport, where more than 2,000 lorries are parked up, the military will be brought in to assist mobile NHS test and trace services. Drivers should be able to get test results within half an hour. But the Food and Drink Federation, worried about supply chains, says it could take more than a week to shift the backlog. For many European drivers, getting home for Christmas still seems unlikely. We are tired, we are disappointed, we are afraid. We, we will miss our Christmas with families and we don't know what to do. We ask in, we, we, I have called everywhere to ask to if they ha can help us and uh, no answer. Nobody knows, no. We have to wait. Last night in Dover, frustrations boiled over with some drivers blocking the roads. No food, not nothing. And now what happened? They leave it for uh, tomorrow and uh, after tomorrow one week more. You are here 48 hours nearly. It's normal, no? We want to go home. And some are warning it won't end here. This is of a different order of magnitude. And in the context of Brexit and what is coming uh, from the 1st of January, this is, this is the start of a very, very serious supply chain disruption of the like that we probably have never experienced. And while Eurostar and Eurotunnel train services as well as flights to France should also resume today, travel bans imposed on the UK by as many as 50 other countries in response to the surge in coronavirus cases here have not yet been lifted. John Donison, BBC News. Well, let's get the latest from Dover, shall we? Our reporter Simon Jones is there this morning at Manston Airfield, where more than 2,000 lorries are parked up waiting for those tests. Simon, morning to you. Do we know when that testing's due to start and when they can get going? We're told the testing is going to get underway this morning. So for hauliers here, at least a glimmer of hope for getting home in time for Christmas. But we can hear some of them at the moment sounding their horns. So there's obviously a degree of frustration here. No doubt they'll want information about when this testing is going to start and how quickly it will be done. The good news is that last night the port of Dover reopened for traffic travelling from here in the UK over to France. And around now the first Euro tunnel services for freight are due to begin once again. But it won't be as simple as driving up and getting on a ferry or a train. For anyone wanting to come from here over to France, they're going to have to have a negative coronavirus test. Now, the type of testing going to be used is the lateral flow test. Now, these give results within about 30 minutes. So the drivers will get a text. If it's negative, then in theory, they'll be able to leave this site and head down towards the port or Euro tunnel. What's not not clear at the moment is how many tests are going to be administered during the course of today, how quickly that's going to happen. Not clear either what happens if someone has a positive test. So lots of questions, but at least some hope today of movement. OK, Simon, thank you for that update. We'll, uh, we'll check in a bit later. And of course, it's not just crossing uh, from Dover and to France that's an other nations affected here too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Netherlands, though, has lifted its ban on travel from the UK, but overnight the Philippines, Japan and South Korea have become the latest countries to restrict British people from entering. Uh, let's speak to our Europe correspondent, Gavin Lee, who's in Brussels for us now. I've already said on this programme this morning, things are moving quickly. Right, Gavin, bring us right up to date yeah. with what's going on. Yeah, things are in motion. We've got um, engines started up. The first ferry left from Dover to, to France uh, earlier this morning, so that's already made it there. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a little time for these antigen tests to get up and running so that the the, the, uh, the freight can quickly start going. We're told that by early afternoon, there's, there's some hope, certainly on the French side, that things will be shifting quite quickly. The French say pretty much everything's open now. They're waiting. They will receive these antigen tests, the fast uh, results tests, and they've already communicated to the British which ones that they 
uh, acknowledged. So there shouldn't be many communication issues there. But yeah, some of Europe's closest neighbours doing the same. The Dutch, as you mentioned a moment ago, doing exactly what it says on the tin when it comes to EU Commission recommendations, saying that they discourage non-essential travel, but they are asking EU member states to stop the ban and instead use either uh, testing, negative tests or quarantine. And the Dutch, interesting, saying that they are not at the moment accepting the fast rapid test is the PCR longer test to them. Quick word on Belgium. The Eurostars have started running again. They've gone a bit further than the other two. They're saying that not just residents are accepted. They're also saying that if you've got reasons, you've got a spouse here, for example, or family here, you can travel across. So a bit more leeway there. 22 other countries in Europe still have vans in place. Listen, I'm Gavin, thank you very much. Uh, Fox probably is underway, probably right now. I think we heard reports of people being out early. Queues at supermarkets, in the shops. everybody two metres apart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going on. Some major supermarkets have had to reintroduce item rationing and there are concerns that supplies of some fresh produce could be limited between Christmas and New Year. Let's cross to Berry Market and Sarah Corker is there for us this morning. Are oh, they already queuing behind you, Sarah? Yes, good morning from Berry Market. Traders are hoping this will be one of the busiest days of the year as people stock up on their festive goods. This is the queue for the butchers. They've been here early trying to get their last minute turkeys. And more broadly, we're expected to spend a record breaking £12 billion on groceries in December alone. That is up £1.5 billion on last year. Turkey sales there up too by 36%. And when it comes to Christmas puddings, we're expected to spend £11 million on those. Mince pie sales, though, are actually down 8% this year, perhaps because there are fewer social gatherings. But for the bakers here, there's already a big queue. And we can grab a chat with Joanne, who's been up since 4am this morning. Morning, this morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Very busy for you today. Very busy. How important is it that you get that money in today after a difficult year? It's just, it's just, we've not slept last night making sure we've got enough muffins, enough pies, want to make sure we've got every, enough stock for our customers. It's the most, it's the busiest day of the year and it's it's our life, this. We, we absolutely love it and it's absolutely busting already. We just... Let's get it all sold. It's brilliant. <laughs> and, and what do you expect the big sellers will be today? Uh, meat pies from Hans Linden, City Greens. Wimbury pies and fresh oven bottom muffins. You want a proper bacon butty on Christmas Day with our muffins. Sounds good. Sounds Absolutely. good. Well, I'll let you serve all yes. the customers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good Christmas. And the market has been open all year, but trade has obviously fluctuated. We can speak to Donna now, who's from uh, Berry Council, who run the market. It's been a really tough year, stop and start for businesses. How have traders coped? It's been an unbelievably tough year, not only for the traders, but for the Bury Council market staff as well, who've had to help open and close the market. The business interruption has been really difficult, but Bury Council have provided support with rent-free periods and grants, but it's still been incredibly difficult for the traders. To what extent is perhaps one positive to come out of all of this, the fact more of us are working from home, so we're spending more money locally. People are perhaps rediscovering what's on their doorstep? Absolutely, and shopping local is just vital for us at Bury Market. Um, in Bury, we've made a climate action pledge, and this helps us to fit in one of those pledges. Shop local, it's more sustainable, and help our small businesses. Donna, thank you very much for that. So some positive news to come out of a, a difficult year. And there are some gaps actually on the market this morning. I spoke to some fruit and veg traders earlier who said it was really difficult at the wholesalers this morning because of that disruption at Dover. They're finding it hard to get green vegetables, lettuce and some soft fruits. Sarah, you're making us starving here. Our tummies are rumbling. But uh, thank you very much indeed. Good to see them uh, doing good business.